Ladies and gentlemen, the following segment of the podcast is presented exclusively by Hillsdale College. For over 175 years, four purposes have defined Hillsdale's mission, learning, character, faith, and freedom. Thank you for listening and my sincere appreciation to our brothers and sisters at Hillsdale for their great sponsorship. He's here. He's here. Now, broadcasting them from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Levin, it's a pleasure to be with you as always. Thank you for being here. Our number, 877-381-3811. I think I should give out a number to like a pizzeria, Mr. Producer. 877-381-3811. Man, do we have a killer show for you. May I say that? I think I will. We have two guests, as you know. It's not that I'm ideologically opposed to guests, but we keep it to a limit. Uh, But our guest next hour is going to be John Eastman one of President Trump's attorneys during the election, who's asked to come on the program, and we're going to discuss some constitutional issues. We're going to discuss the January 6th committee. He has been subpoenaed, and um, he and his lawyers say it's perfectly legitimate to come on here and discuss certain issues, and we're going to do that. Because you see, the committee leaks. You got, uh, what's the guy's name? Benny Hill, the chairman of the committee. Is that his name, Benny Hill? Oh, uh, Benny Thompson, that's right. Uh, he's out there trashing various people, telling them that they're criminals uh, and they're guilty because they assert their Fifth Amendment right. You know, I don't think Benny Hill would uh, support that in any other circumstance. Would he support that in any other circumstance? No, I don't think so. But see, this is a Stalinist Pelosi committee. It's what it is. It is a disgusting disgrace to the American system while they claim to be defending. It's nothing more than Broomhilda, Eva... Stretch, a.k.a. Nancy Pelosi's uh, Politburo. And she uses it, of course, to try and inflict as much damage as she can. Much like her plastic surgeon. May I say that, Mr. Producer? I think I can again. We have a looming deadline, ladies and gentlemen. Always something is looming. There's pressure. There's danger. Look over your shoulder. Quick. Oh, no, no. It's okay. There's a looming deadline. What is the looming deadline? Oh, my God. The government might shut down. And to quote the late, great Nancy Pelosi, it's reckless to close the government. It's a double whammy. Oh, a double whammy? Oh, my Lord. Now, the late, not-so-great former Speaker of the House, Paul Ryan, once told me right here on the air, Right here on the air in front of all of you. That when they say government shutdown, they actually mean 17% of the government. The entitlements continue. In other words, the welfare state marches on. There's some inconveniences, of course, for people who are on the dole. But so be it. But do you see all the media attention? Oh my God, there's a looming deadline. They may shut the government down. Now again, as I've pointed out repeatedly, and the backbumpers burp up and regurgitate, that is the backbenchers, Every weekend, the government shuts down. I'll put this to the test. 
you seniors, I want you to call the Social Security Administration on Saturday or Sunday. (gasps) No answers. What's that all about? You folks on food stamps, call your food stamp office or whatever you call. Call them on Sunday. Anybody there? No. Goodness gracious, nobody's here. Call the CDC right now on Friday night, Eastern Time. Are they there? No. They've gone home. They've gone home to collect with family members in a closed environment without masks. That's an unbelievable thing. How about the Department of Energy? No, I don't think they're ever open. How about the EPA? No, the environment's only important during the weekdays, and certainly not at night. In other words, the government shut down. Now, they keep adding holidays. Didn't we add another holiday? What was the other holiday we just added, Mr. Producer? I forget. What's it called? Juneteenth. I have to confess my ignorance. I never knew what Juneteenth is, but now it's a holiday. So how do you celebrate Juneteenth? You shut down the government for a three-day holiday. Are there like ten national holidays? Oh, yes. The government shut down a lot. People don't show up for work a lot. People are at home working virally because of the virus. All kinds of stuff. So it is absolutely unconscionable and reckless to shut down 17% of the bloated, bloated, incompetent, uh, wealth-redistributing, politically-controlled, bureaucratic-run federal government. Now, in the private sector, it's righteous to shut it down when people in the government tell you to shut it down. Shut the churches, shut the mosques, shut the, shut the synagogues, and shut your mouth. We've got more mandates coming because of the president of France, Macron. Right, Mr. Producer? Isn't this the Macron variant? I think it is. The Macron variant. I jest. No, no, we have a new variant, ladies and gentlemen. That according to the South African government, the head of their uh, medical expertise in their government actually practices medicine unlike Fauci. You know, unless they play doctor, nurse, wife, husband, you get the drift. But he's not a normal practicing doctor like she is. And she said, it's extremely mild. Now, typically, you don't use the word extremely in front of the word mild. How can something be extremely mild? But you get the point. It's mild. It's mild. So because it's mild, Joe Biden went over to NIH today rambled through a pre-written speech, shuffled on the stage, shuffled off the stage, and what did he say? You, the American people, it's your fault. We're going to test you till you're blue in the face. We're going to vaccinate you or you're going to lose your damn job. It's time the American people get behind the Biden agenda. You notice the difference between the approach Trump took and the approach dummy takes? They're very significantly different. Trump actually embraced science. I know. I understand. I understand what Carl Bernstein has been saying to you. But look at Carl Bernstein. He's a fat slob. It's like him talking about nutrition. Carl, you're a fat slob. I don't want to hear about nutrition from you. Or it's like the legal analyst, Jeffrey Tubin, talking about proper behavior in front of your cohorts while his pants are dropped and he's shooting rockets. May I say that, Mr. Bidus? I think I'll say that, too. Yes. Ah, the media. Scum of the earth. May I say that? I will. Why do I keep saying may I say that? Because I'm doing my best Joe Biden. May I say that? I think I will. So in any event, government shutdown, bad. Private sector shutdown, righteous. What we have, ladies and gentlemen, are know-nothing politicians making scientific decisions. And Fauci is nine-tenths politician and one-tenth scientist. We can check Fauci's decisions with experts all over the country. There's a great one out of Johns Hopkins. There's several great ones out of Stanford. There's great ones out of Yale. There's great ones out of Oxford. Great ones out of the Rockefeller College. Great, great experts who, who study these things, who practice these things. They're not holed up in an office, earning half a million dollars a year, 
clawed their way to the top 412 years ago. You remember back when Joe Biden was a segregationist and a racist and managed to hold on to power. It takes a lot to hold on to that position. The 38, 39 years, really think about that. Think about how vicious and vile you have to be to keep all those young whippersnappers with more background, more expertise, more education from moving into your position. We have a czar in this country. His name is Fauci. And he's about as effective as the last czar of Russia, if you want to know the truth. So nonetheless, we have the Macron variant. I know it's not Macron. I call it Macron. We have the Macron variant. And so more masks, more testing, even if you've been vaccinated. This is the problem. Now listen to the logic. You folks, the American people, at least half of us, are logical. You're being told, get vaccinated. Get boosted. Wear masks. Wear, uh, wear galoshes. Uh, wear paper hats. Wear raincoat. Get in the fetal position, under the desk, in the basement. Get ready. Don't talk to your family. They may be carriers. Is this what Americans do in the face of a pandemic? Do they double down and fight like hell? Red-blooded Americans. Is this what we do? Is this what we're doing all over the rest of the world? Some places, yes. Some places, no. But out of one side of their mouth, they say, you must be vaccinated. Vaccinated, boosted, wear masks, get tested. Okay. In the same paragraph, they're saying, vaccinations, even the booster, even masks, do not guarantee you'll be protected. So we're going to test you. We're going to quarantine you. And then when people actually bring up science, they say, now, wait a minute. May I discuss science? Well, of course. Fauci says, I'm Mr. Science. Not too big of an ego or a narcissist. I'm Mr. Science. Just like he's an athlete. He throws the ball to home plate and winds up at first base. Winds up at first base. All these years. Guy's four feet two inches tall and he was a great basketball player. Really? Where? Anyway, so they say what? Well, the vaccine's not a guarantee. What a great marketing plan. Get vaccinated. Protect yourself. If you're not, you're killing people. But it's not a guarantee. Wait a minute. I'm confused. That's because you're a white supremacist. Oh, got it. That's because you're a racist. Oh, okay. Now, the science applies unless politics applies, you see. There is absolutely no scientific evidence. I've run this through two experts, one from Yale, one from Stanford on Life, Liberty, and Levin, on this program. They say there's nothing that demonstrates giving a vaccine to a 5-year-old, to what is it, a 14 or 15-year-old, is going to do anything, or that they need it. Oh, so they're going to mandate it. Okay, that's not science. If you have natural immunity, which a massive Israeli study, and the New England, what is it, Journal of Medicine, Two days ago, I told you about it. Said that natural immunity is actually, based on their studies, the studies that they've pulled together from all over the world is actually more effective. Or whether you have natural immunity by choice or not. And the CDC doesn't even recognize natural immunity. In fact, about a month ago, they put out phony data challenging it. And our friend Professor Kendor, who's a brilliant, brilliant man, unraveled the whole damn thing. That's not science, ladies and gentlemen. Illegal aliens coming across an open border by the hundreds of thousands. Hello? Hello? Hundreds of thousands. From the poorest parts of Central and South America. The poorest parts of Central and South America who are not vaccinated, who are not tested. And by the way, not just for the virus, but polio, a thousand other things. Well, on occasion, the great Fauci tells us, like the great Houdini, The great Fauci tells us on occasion, you know, when the occasions are relevant, we test them. Now, when it comes to the American citizen, they don't say when the occasion's relevant. No. Some cases they put on German uniforms and they, you shall do the following. 
you shall do it or else. Now, notice, as I've said many times before, they used to bring up DeSantis. He was the boogeyman. DeSantis said, I have my own experts, my own scientists. We're looking at our data. Florida's the third most populous state in the country. In many cases, he's completely rejected Fauci and the CDC. Florida has the least number of cases, let alone the least number of hospitalizations and the least number of deaths of any state in the country now. You know who's number four? Texas, the second most populous state. You know one of the worst? California. California, which has adopted North Korean medical policies as well as energy policies with brownouts and blackouts, you might have noticed. I've got a lot more. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. As we celebrate the Christmas season and reflect on our blessings, Hillsdale College thanks you for standing with them as they celebrate over 177 years of blessings. Since 1844, Hillsdale has provided the kind of education essential to preserving free government. And for decades, the college has advanced learning and liberty through a variety of outreach programs. Perhaps you receive in Primus for free every month or have taken one of Hillsdale's excellent free online courses or have attended one of Hillsdale's free regional events. You know, Hillsdale refuses to take even one penny of government money. This independence allows Hillsdale to focus on promoting its core purposes, learning, character, faith, and freedom, without government interference. There's never been a greater need for the kind of classical liberal arts education that Hillsdale offers nationwide. So during this season of blessings, Hillsdale thanks you for your partnership. To learn more about Hillsdale College, visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. I'm in one of these weird moods, so you never know what's going to happen around here. Uh, you see this big dwarf they keep bringing on for Fitz? I'm the content, uh, you know, uh, king. and uh, But we have to balance that between the First Amendment. Please, Congress, regulate us. What a bunch of crap. Get the hell off Facebook and Twitter. Now. Joy Reid, MSNBC's uh, big-time racist, and there are a number of them over there, bigot, homophobe, who I believe should be removed from the media because she, in my view, has a role in so much that is horrible about this country. Um, Dr. Joy Reid, she's a doctor today. Listen to this. Cut 11, go. But making sense is hardly the point. It's about power and spreading mm. lies and Ooh. fake outrage. So the MAGA squad wins elections. Uh. They are today's angels of death. Ooh. Refusing to get vaccinated and urging fellow Americans to remain exposed. All right, let's wait there. Angel of death. Then she must be the idol of death. Now let me respond to this poisonous, this poisonous, let me just respond. You know what, ma'am? Let me explain something to you. One of the communities that is most resistant of taking the vaccine are communities of color, particularly the black community. Are you aware of that? Joyless, Reed, are you aware of that? So what do you say to people of color? What do you say to people in the black community? Do you talk to them the way you talk to tens of millions of other Americans? How much longer is Comcast going to put up? with this disgusting, racist demagogue. How much longer are they going to put up with this female Louis Farrakhan? How much longer are they going to put up? How much longer are you going to put up with Comcast? I'm quite serious. So what would she say to communities of color? As we celebrate the Christmas season and reflect on our blessings, Hillsdale College thanks you for standing with them as they celebrate over 177 years of blessings. Since 1844, Hillsdale has provided the kind of education essential to preserving free government. And for decades, the college has advanced learning and liberty through a variety of outreach programs. Perhaps you receive in Primus for free every month or have taken one of Hillsdale's excellent free online courses or have attended one of Hillsdale's free regional events. You know, Hillsdale refuses to take even one penny of government money. This independence allows Hillsdale to focus on promoting its core purposes, learning, character, faith, and freedom, without government interference. 
There's never been a greater need for the kind of classical liberal arts education that Hillsdale offers nationwide. So during this season of blessings, Hillsdale thanks you for your partnership. To learn more about Hillsdale College, visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. Nobody says it better than Mark Levin. I'll go with what Mark Levin said, because nobody could say it better. Call in now at 877-381-3811. Come on now, ladies and gentlemen. We're standing up against American Marxism, which has found a home in the in the rancidness of the Democrat Party, the party of slavery, the party of segregation, the party of Jim Crow, the party of Korematsu. That's right. That's right. I said it. All these frauds in the media, the New York Times et al. and their history of supporting genocidal dictatorships and Marxist regimes, like they have something on us. Are you kidding me? Now, it's time to kick back. Come on. Hello. Come on. Mr. Producer in America, we are preparing something for our friend Jimmy Kibblin Beats, or whatever his name. Jimmy Kimmel. I cannot wait. We're working on it. We will we'll run it at some point, hopefully in the near future, on Levin TV. We will put it out all over the Internet through Blaze, through Levin TV. By the way, had a great interview with Alex Marlowe over at Breitbart. I'm telling you, that guy is the real deal. I've always loved Breitbart. That site is unwavering. You should go over there right now. You'll see we're headlined all over the place. It was a terrific interview. It was almost a half hour. Just, just terrific. So you might want to check that out. We have some great, independent, real journalism going on. You look at Blaze TV. I could not be more proud of Blaze Media. I could not be more proud of Blaze Media. You know, we started as conservative review TV. Uh, We were approached and we agreed that we would join up with Beck's operation. Now we have this full-scale operation with an enormous number of subscribers. You look at the Daily Wire. You look at Daily Caller. You look at Right Scoop. Legal Insurrection. You know, I think uh, Jeffrey Tubin should start a show, a, a website called Legal Erection. Don't you think, Mr. Producer? But nonetheless, there's so many great conservatives out there, independent journalists. I mean, it's really fantastic. All right, let's go. Joe Biden, sort of a shadow president, he's at the National Institute of Health in Maryland today. And I thought, all right, finally, they're going to give him the care that this guy needs. You know, put him in depends take all the sharp objects away, take all the fillings and caps out of his mouth, put him in a padded room and and wish him all the best and give him a gold wash. But no, he's there to give a speech for crying out loud. And this, it's unbelievable what he had to say. Considering it came out of his mouth, cut one, go. I plan to announce, my plan I'm announcing today pulls no punches. All right, stop. He's not announcing any medical plans, any effort to find new vaccines, any effort to find new therapeutics, his plan is always the police state, the iron fist. Authoritarianism. That's the plan. I told you, it's autocracy before science. They don't even know the science, or to the extent they know the science, it's quite clear that this is a quote-unquote extremely mild variant, the Macron variant. I know it's not Macron. I call it Macron, the Macron variant. It doesn't matter. They look for the opportunity. To use the iron fist. They look for the opportunity to use the brass knuckles of government, to centralize power, to push the people around. But whatever you do, oh my God, we've got a looming government shutdown. What are we going to do? Live, eat, drink, be happy. You know, there was a day when we conservatives actually celebrated government shutdowns. I remember when Ronald Reagan shut down the federal government six times to get what he wanted. Instead, we have this hapless loser of a Republican leader in the Senate. Bipartisanship. That's him, McConnell. He sees no reason to shut down the government. 
The Democrats see every reason to push for what they want. What is it exactly that McConnell wants to do as the leader of the Republicans? What is it? They never push against the American Marxist left. We never make any progress toward liberty. We never advance our agenda. We never go on offer. Blah, 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 blah. And he's backed by, of course, the editorial pages of the Wall Street Journal. He's backed by the National Review. He's backed by the Never Trumpers. He's backed by the Republic establishment. What the hell have they accomplished? Obama ran circles around them. Now Biden's running circles around them. Now I admit, backwards. Sometimes they're not circles. Sometimes they're triangles. But nonetheless, he's running. Now Biden says, look, I've got a plan. This country's divisive. This has become a political issue. Did not this clown from his basement and his running mate, what's your name, did they not spend the entire campaign politicizing the coronavirus? Blaming Donald Trump for every single death? Lying about what he said and the context that he used? Did they not spend every second of the campaign raising national doubt about any vaccines that would be developed during the Trump presidency? Did they not do that, ladies and gentlemen? Yes, they did that. Did they not, when they came in the office, lie about all the advances they made? Did he not use July 4th as independence from the coronavirus? Do you remember all that, ladies and gentlemen? I do. And now it's your fault, particularly the unvaccinated, many of whom have natural immunity, many of whom can't be vaccinated. Doesn't matter. You're the enemy. Folks, we have 80% vaccination in this country. We don't have 80% anything in this country. We have 80% vaccination. We had the Yale expert I told you the other day. A true professor, more of an expert than Fauci could ever wish to be. Dr. Risch, he said about 70% of the population has natural immunity. We know how this works. The state of Florida is the gold standard. It's the gold standard. Protect the elderly, protect the sixty, uh, uh, the the sickly, and uh, otherwise, what's with all these mandates? So Joe Biden sees an opportunity, as do the other the Marxists who surround him, to get people fired, so they lose their pension, they lose their health care, while they're subsidizing non-work. By the way, going after. The people in this country that really oppose authoritarianism, the cops, the firefighters, the military, including the National Guardsmen. People protect this guy going after ICE, Border Patrol. Oh, yeah, they're the real enemy. It's the illegal aliens that we embrace. But they don't believe in science. If you're an illegal alien, you sneak across the border, so be it. You don't have to be tested. You don't have to be... Now, if you're a law-abiding American citizen, you take a plane ride, you go, okay, look, maybe I'll go to the Bahamas, I'll come back. Uh, excuse me. Have you been vaccinated? Yes. Have you been vaccinated? Yes. Did you get the booster? Yes. Did you test negative on the way out? Yes. Did you test negative on the way in? Yes. We caught you. We caught you. We got you. What are you talking about? Seven days in self-quarantine in your home. Go to the basement. Oh, jeez. And if you don't, you lose your job, you lose your pension, you lose your medical care. Got it? Okay. Now you sneak across the border. You're an illegal alien. You've never been an American citizen. You've never contributed to this country once. Well, you go to New York City, you get the vote. You get health care. You get public education. Do you want to get vaccinated? Ah, we're not going to ask. We're not going to ask. We're not racist. We're not white supremacists. We're not going to ask if you should be vaccinated. But don't worry, because according to the CDC, the NIH, and the rest of the alphabet soup, get vaccinated, vaccinated again, get the booster, get it all. Wear a paper bag over your head at all times. That's right. That's right. Do all those things. And the vaccine may not work. Wow, what a message. What am I, You know, every country is not conducting itself this way. Every state's not conducting itself this way. Why do you think people are getting the hell out of New York and Michigan and Illinois and New Jersey, getting the hell out of California and trying to escape to these red states, which, of course, the Democrats want to nationalize? So you don't have any options. Why do you think 
Florida is gaining enormously in population, and New York is losing enormously in population. Why do you think the clown that runs New Jersey almost lost his seat, despite the fact it's two and a half to three Democrats to one Republican? Why do you think California is being depopulated of American citizens, but populated by illegal aliens? People talk with their feet. Now, Biden talks with his, uh, I don't know, but people talk with their feet, their mobility, they're moving. Why do you think Biden's popularity rating is 36%? 36%. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. As we celebrate the Christmas season and reflect on our blessings, Hillsdale College thanks you for standing with them as they celebrate over 177 years of blessings. Since 1844, Hillsdale has provided the kind of education essential to preserving free government. And for decades, the college has advanced learning and liberty through a variety of outreach programs. Perhaps you receive in Primus for free every month or have taken one of Hillsdale's excellent free online courses or have attended one of Hillsdale's free regional events. You know, Hillsdale refuses to take even one penny of government money. This independence allows Hillsdale to focus on promoting its core purposes, learning, character, faith, and freedom, without government interference. There's never been a greater need for the kind of classical liberal arts education that Hillsdale offers nationwide. So during this season of blessings, Hillsdale thanks you for your partnership. To learn more about Hillsdale College, visit levinforhillsdale.com. That's L-E-V-I-N for Hillsdale.com. Just heard a very, very good man, by the way. Uh, Somebody who I uh, really admire on Fox say, we crossed the Rubicon on vaccines 150 years ago when Massachusetts mandated smallpox vaccines of a sort. So what does that have to do with today, Mr. Producer? He said Massachusetts mandated it, right? Massachusetts mandated it. Not the federal government. Not the federal government. The federal government does not have constitutional police powers to mandate any of it. Some of you may wish they did. Certainly on the left, they wish the federal government was in control of everything. Certainly your life. But no, we've not had federal mandates on vaccines. Can you name one? Now, you have states that agree, states that communicate, states that coordinate. You have a lot of schools that won't, that, that won't allow kids unless they have certain vaccines and so forth and so on. But it's all state-related. It's not federal-related. Why do you think Joe Biden is stretching with OSHA? Why do you think three federal courts have, have, have effectively stricken what Joe Biden has tried to do? He's tried to seize power that they do not have police powers. If you're seizing police powers, remember what I said, police powers. That means the federal government is supplanting state governments. And that is a scary authority. That is scary. Period. Absolutely inappropriate. So, no, we don't do that as a matter of course in this country, period. What is it, Mr. Producer? Oh, yes. Yes, I love this. Ron DeSantis today in an event on what? Biden is proposing, and the federal government's again. Ron DeSantis should be in charge of, of uh, science and medical decisions in this country, quite frankly. And interestingly enough, he brings up the Bahamas, and this is the first I've seen this. So, where, what can I say? Two eyes, two eyes. Cut seven, go. And then I also just think what President Biden's doing by trying to impose more restrictions, you know, he's now going to say, that if you go to the Bahamas as an American citizen and you come back, you've got to do a test, a COVID test. But if you just come right across the border illegally, then somehow that's fine and we don't care about the test or vaccination. Uh, I just don't understand it. Um, I think it's all it's going to do is is cause a lot of problems. Uh, I don't think that they should be uh, imposing any mandates on air travel or any of the things that they have done. Uh, I think it it has not been anything that's really made much of a difference. I think it's inconvenienced a lot of people. I think it's it's crimped uh, the willingness of people to travel. And I don't think that that's necessarily a a good thing. So uh, we're going to look to see ways that that we're going to 
the, the, see if the state of Florida can potentially uh, do something to seek to seek some r- relief on this. That's a leader. That's a governor. That's why his state is leading in almost all categories, as far as I know, in terms of uh, protecting its citizens. Biden's all bully, all huff and puff, all smoke. That's what he is. They have plans and plans and plans. It's not hard for the government to come up with plans to steal your liberty. And they've got a zillion plans. The blue state governors, the rhino governors, the blue city mayors, the rhino mayors, the rhino members of Congress, the Republican establishment. You've got a handful of patriots in the United States Senate and the United States House of Representatives out of the base of the Republican Party. We're trying to explain to McConnell, who's not particularly bright nor articulate, and trying to explain to the Republican leadership that you need to fight these mandates. It's about liberty. You know, you have the Solicitor General of the United States, a complete hack, at the Supreme Court yesterday saying, killing a baby in the womb is about liberty. Well, it's certainly not liberty for the baby, just one man's opinion, may I say, and probably tens of millions of us, men and women, Even people transitioning, you never know. And here's the thing. They called that liberty and a choice. But it involved another human being. What about liberty and a choice when it comes to vaccine? Well, that affects the whole country. You're damn right it does. And Fauci's been wrong more times than right. Biden has politicized this entire thing. This Macron, uh, uh, whatever they want to call it, variant really isn't a pimple on an elephant's butt at this point. And the countries in which it has has affected first in Africa, eight countries, South Africa first, but seven other countries, African countries, here we are. We're being transparent. We tell the United States of the world what's going on. We're telling you that it's, quote, unquote, extremely mild. We're not having an epidemic, let alone a pandemic. And now look what you're doing. You're penalizing us. The same Biden, the same people, the same Fauci who opposed Trump on the Wuhan virus that killed millions and millions of people worldwide. So what do you expect people to see other than politics through and through? Illegal aliens, okay? That's just absurd. That's not science. That's political science. I'll be right back. He's here. Now, broadcasting from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Uh, Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Our number 877-381-3811-877-381-3811. John Eastman, a prominent constitutional scholar, obviously an attorney, an attorney who advised the Trump campaign and President Trump, and as a consequence is being targeted by the January 6th Nancy Pelosi Stalinist uh, what do they call it? A commission? It's not a commission, it's a Politburo. Where its members go out and declare people guilty, and now they're trying to gather information. This is what they do in the third world. This is what they do in fascistic and Marxist regimes where the law's out the window. But John contacted me. He's a longtime friend. He said, look, I, I need to talk to people about what's going on here. And I said, as long as you check with your lawyer first which he did, and he wants to, and he's going to. He has a right to speak to millions of people. This still is America last time I checked, even though some people hate the country, some people pretend to love it while they undermine it. Uh, That would be the likes of uh, Liz Cheney and the head case, Adam Kingsinger. So we will give him an opportunity. Maybe they'll subpoena me, Mr. Producer. Now, I don't know anything about January 6th, but I would not fight it. I would go in there and kick ass. You know that? I'm not kidding. I mean, if the if the net's that wide. I'm, I'm, I'm quite serious. I don't know a damn thing about January 6th, but I do know what I want to tell them. I do know what I want to tell them. 
Now, ladies and gentlemen, the Women's Tennis Association has cut all ties with the genocidal communist regime in communist China. Now, Marco Rubio, also at Breitbart, he is uh, attacking the New York Times, which always deserves to be attacked. And the title is, Marco Rubio, New York Times covered up proof that Xi Jinping personally ordered Uyghur genocide. He challenged the New York Times, a newspaper with a long history defending communist atrocities, amen to that, and the Third Reich, to explain its decision to withhold critical information indicating Chinese dictator Xi Jinping was personally the architect behind the ongoing genocide of Muslim minorities in the country. They're running one of the world's largest concentration camps, an occupied western region of eastern Turkestan, formerly labeled Zhejiang by Beijing. Extensive evidence compiled by human rights reports and journalists has proven that the Chinese Communist Party under Xi's control is subjecting the ethnic Uyghur minority people of East Turkestan to a variety of crimes against humanity, including torture, gang rape, forced sterilization, systematic abortion, infanticide, and slavery. And slavery. So what does the Women's Tennis Association have to do with any of this? Pay attention, NBA. Pay attention, tough guys at ESPN. Pay attention, tough guy coaches at the NBA. You clown commissioner at the NBA. You clown LeBron James. That's right, I said it. Pay attention. Ongoing genocide and slavery. And what do these bastards do? They just want their money while attacking capitalism. But not at the Women's Tennis Association, and I salute them. Blaze Media. The Women's Tennis Association followed through on their threat to cancel all tennis tournaments in China and Hong Kong over the disappearance of Bang Shui, a player who had made sexual assault accusations against a former Chinese official. WTAA President Steve Simon... What a terrific, honorable human being joined a chorus of critics who accused the Chinese Communist government of covering up any involvement they might have had in the disappearance of Shui. The move will cost the organization hundreds of millions of dollars. Did you hear that, NBA? Did you hear that, LeBron? We're definitely willing to pull our business and deal with all the complications that come with it because this is certainly, this is bigger than business said Simon. Women need to be respected and not censored. Well, where are all these women? The former world top-ranked women's doubles player claimed in early November that former Chinese Vice Premier Zhang Gelui had forced her to have sex with him at his home three years ago. The post was immediately censored on Welbo by the Chinese Communist government. I'm sure it would have been immediately censored by Facebook and Twitter, too. Shui went missing for about a month until Chinese state-run media released video of her, but the WTA said they have not been able to speak to her. Unfortunately, the leadership in China has not addressed this very serious issue in any credible way. Well, we know where Peng is. I have serious doubts that she is free, safe, and not subject to censorship, coercion, and intimidation, said Simon in a new statement. The Women's Tennis Association has been clear on what is needed here, and we repeat our call for a full and transparent investigation without censorship and to bang Shui's sexual assault accusation. None of this is acceptable, nor can it become acceptable, he said. If powerful people can suppress the voices of women and sweep allegations of sexual assault under the rug, then the basis on which the WTAA was founded, equality for women, would suffer an immense setback. It will not and cannot let that happen to the WTA and its players. So will they be joined in solidarity by the Me Too movement? Will they be joined in solidarity by the NBA, by the NFL, by the MLB? Will they be joined in solidarity by the Women's Basketball Association? Will they be joined in solidarity by the Biden administration? And the birthing woman who happens to, excuse me, birthing person who happens to be Solicitor General of the United States? Not a chance. Not a chance. The Women's Tennis Association deserves the support of the American people. 
the support of the American people, the disgusting media in this country, the disgusting sports media in this country. What a bunch of frauds, phony, tough guys, phony, tough guys, football players, basketball players, all the rest of it, tough guys. But when it comes to China, sissies, weak, pathetic, modern day slavery apparently doesn't offend them. Nor does it appear to offend the Democrats. What are you talking about, Mark? There was a bill presented in Congress by the Republicans that no business should be done with any companies, no business should be done in terms of purchasing any products that are made in China through slave labor. You know who stopped it from passing, ladies and gentlemen? The Democrats. The Democrats. They talk about slavery long ago. What about confronting slavery today? What will the Democrats do about slavery today in communist China? Nothing. How about ESPN? Nothing. How about NBC that has exclusive television rights to the Olympics in communist China? Shh. Don't say anything. How about MSNBC, the little sister? Shh. What do you say, Joy Reid? You say nothing, because you're a clown. You say nothing. What has Mr. Nostralistus said? The morning schmo. Mr. Banjo playing boy on the bridge in Deliverance. What does he say? Nothing. Shh. How about Andrea Mitchell? Nothing. Shh. You see, they said Donald Trump was in... Putin's back pocket. They lied. It was Trump who put the most severe sanctions on Russia, including cutting off their pipeline. It's MSNBC and NBC owned by Comcast. Did I say Comcast? I meant Comcast. They're the ones in bed with genocidal, genocidal, slave-supporting dictatorships. It's them. And not a single one of their hosts or guests, or contributors, has spoken out. Right, Nicole Wallace? Not one. Right, Rachel Maddow? Not one. And the other loons in the conga line of freaks and frauds. I'll be right back. Mark Lovin. Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs with the absolute best consumer service team based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and six gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com. And enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L E V I N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. Folks, I've made the case here over and over again that what's happening with this January 6th committee is unconstitutional. Uh, It follows, in my personal view, I speak for myself, a Stalinist model, that you have members of this committee going out and convicting people, claiming they're guilty. You have no real Republican representation. The House Republican leader recommended candidates for the committee, and they were rejected. Uh, This is basically Nancy Pelosi's personal political operation. And they're using the power of the House of Representatives, the resources, and so forth, to pursue their ends. I have on the phone John Eastman, who's a longtime buddy of mine, who is a constitutional scholar, who dared to say, whether you agree with him or not, that, look, uh, the, the Congress was not required to count 
uh, electors out of states where the states are still battling. In other words, where legislatures are still battling governors, where things are still being litigated and so forth. And you can agree or disagree with that. The Constitution provides, uh, really, I think, uh, an opening for either view. But that should never be a basis to pursue somebody and to su- suggest they were involved in a, an insurrection against their country. I've known John Eastman for years. This man is a patriot. John Eastman, you have asked to come on the program. How are you, my friend? I'm well, Mark. Thanks very much for that wonderful lead-in and introduction. Well, I want people to know that you're not the boogeyman, because this is the way it yeah. works in America today. They create a, uh, a boogeyman, and then all, uh, all means of attack are appropriate. I don't buy that, and I never will. Now, John Eastman, your lawyer has written a letter to this committee. Let's start at the beginning, and we'll take as much time as we need. And you, you pay attention to your own, uh, your own protections as a lawyer, okay? Let's start okay. with this. You and your lawyer are challenging the authority of this so-called committee. Explain. Well, you know, as we got into it, uh, you know, the, it, w- it was very public when, uh, when uh, Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy recommended five people to serve on the committee, and Nancy Pelosi refused. She did not want Jim Banks and Jim Jordan on that committee because they are aggressive in questioning and calling, uh, you know, calling crap when they see it. Um, and so she didn't want him on the committee. She wanted this to be lopsided. So she refused McCarthy's appointments and appointed two of her own, the two, uh, you know, the two leading anti-Trump, most virulent anti-Trump Republicans in the Congress, Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger. Um, but the fact that she made those appointments, rather than accepting the recommendations of, of, of the minority leader, means there's no Republican-appointed member of that committee. And, and as we got into the rules on the committee and the authorizing resolution for that committee, you've got to have a ranking minority member for a lot of reasons. Uh, they have to be consulted before they can issue depositions, notices. Uh, they, they get to pick opposing counsel to, to you know, basically cross-examine or, or provide a counterpoint uh, uh, on the questioning of witnesses. And uh, under the rules of the House, that person is entitled to equal time in the questioning. Well, none of that exists right here. Uh, and so it's a stacked deck. And so the more we, we, we got into it, it's not only violating House rules and the authorizing committee, it's violating the most basic principles of due process. Uh, uh, one of the other House rules for these committees is a witness gets to request that other witnesses be called. So, if, you know, so you, you want to put this out there. Uh, you know, I've said that, that various states uh, acted illegally in the conduct of the election. Uh, and, and you want to go after me for that? Well, then let's, let's bring in as witnesses the people that I claim acted illegally in the conduct of the election. And those people have to be questioned by the committee, but there's no opposing counsel to question them. So the whole thing has become a charade. And, and that's why we laid it out, chapter and verse, citing the rules, uh, because I, I'm a firm believer that the law still matters, even if the other side doesn't think it does. And, and we, you know, uh, we, we, we need to faithfully apply the law and constitutional protections like basic notions of due process here as we go forward. Yeah, I, I mean, the only place I can think of a process like this would be communist China, uh, formerly communist uh, Russia, but now Putin's Russia, these, these, these regimes that reject any notion of, of due process. And just because it's Congress and just because it's the Speaker and just because it's a committee issuing subpoenas doesn't mean what they're doing is constitutional or legitimate. And so you're challenging this now. You have rights under the federal Constitution. You have due process rights. You have the Fifth Amendment right. I just heard the chairman of this committee, uh, another individual who was subpoenaed, I believe a gentleman by the name of Clark, he's, he's asserted his Fifth Amendment right, he's a lawyer, and he asserts his Fifth Amendment right, not because he's saying he's guilty or anything of that sort, because he's rejecting what's trying to be done to him, setting him up, a perjury trap or something like that, and Benny Thompson goes out and says, if you assert the Fifth Amendment, you're basically confessing your guilt. Have you ever heard of anything like that? No, and it is, it is 180 degrees opposite of the rule in this country, innocent until proven guilty, until proven guilty. The Fifth Amendment is there to protect.
protect the innocent as well as the guilty, the Supreme Court has said. And in fact, it's designed to protect against abusive prosecutions, which is exactly what we have going here. Um, and, and, uh, you know, and it, I, mean, I got to tell you, you know, you look at the subpoenas. I got 29 categories of documents and communications spanning a period of 19 months. They want every communication I've ever had, every contact in my contact list for anybody that I've ever talked to about elections. <laughs> I mean, about it, elections? It, 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 it's, about elections and election integrity and election fraud and elections. I mean, it is, it is trampling the First Amendment as well as the Fourth Amendment, as well as the Fifth Amendment, as well as the Sixth Amendment. I mean, it's just stunning. And they're doing it for law enforcement purposes because they want to ascertain guilt or innocence. That's not their job. Their job is to legislate. And what they're doing is using the uh, ability of congressional committees to have broader subpoenas than, than the Department of Justice could get, because the Department of Justice can only do this if they get a warrant on probable cause. Well, Congress thinks, well, we don't have that requirement, so we can do the law enforcement job for them and then hand it all over to them. I mean, just shred the Constitution uh, you know, from you know, one side to the other. Uh, and, and, and so I decided that uh, enough of this and you know i'm in a position i know the law i know the constitution and maybe me taking this stand can help some of the other hundred people that have been subpoenaed and are being subject to this star chamber uh to be able to stand up as well and i assume and i hope you are prepared to litigate this all the way to the top right because we cannot have phony committees appointed by an out of control rogue speaker of the house who has had nothing but contempt for the process of the House of Representatives, for the Constitution, and for the opposition party, let alone the former president. We cannot allow a Speaker of the House power, more power than a president has, more power than the Department of Justice has, more power than the Supreme Court has. Jefferson talked about the tyranny of the legislature. I assume you're going to litigate this all the way to the top if you have to. We, we are, although it's going to take some funds. Maybe if I can ask your permission, I'll Go give ahead. out our, our legal defense. Yeah, it's, it's uh, givesendgo.com slash Eastman. And people Wait can a minute, go there. that's so it's complicated. A... Make sure, Mr. Producer, write that down. I'm never going to remember that. Say that again. Givesendgo.com slash Eastman. And people All can right. donate to the legal fund, but also give prayers on that site. It's wonderful. All right. John, are you willing to hold over? I want to ask you about attorney-client privilege and so forth. Sure, absolutely. All right. My friend John Eastman, and I will be right back. Levin, the research arm of conservative media. Call in now, 877-381-3811. You know, ladies and gentlemen, I wish the Republican Party were as tough as the Democrat Party. Maybe a Republican speaker like Kevin McCarthy, he'll drag some of these Democrat lawyers in their asses like Mark Elias and others in front of committees where he chooses the Democrats who sit on the committee for legislative purposes, of course, and issue subpoenas that have 29 categories going back almost two years, asking if they've ever talked to this one or that one or what advice they gave anybody and so forth and so on, and come up with some pretext for it. When will the Republicans fight back? I'm speaking for myself. When will they do this? I mean, now lawyers are fair game because they give advice to a president of the United States that the Democrats don't like. It's perfectly legitimate advice, regardless of what the Holocaust-denying New York Times thinks, regardless of what the corrupt Washington Post thinks. Whether or not it's prudent to follow it or not, that's a different issue. But there are issues raised when there's fighting going on among political branches in a particular state. I'm not going to relitigate that, but there's nothing radical about that idea. There's nothing extremist about that idea. It has nothing to do with an insurrection. John Eastman didn't charge the Capitol building with a loaded weapon. He didn't plant pipe bombs. He didn't threaten violence. I know, John, he's a rather passive man, to be quite honest with you. A lot more passive than I am, may I say, with all due respect. All right, John Eastman, number one, as I was thinking during the break, frankly, with a subpoena this broad, you know what that means? They don't have any predicate for any of this. None of it. Otherwise, why such a wide net? 
You understand what I'm saying? There's no predicate. Yep. No, I mean, the, the notion that they, you know, their, their charge from Congress in the authorizing resolution is the incidents of January 6th and their causes. And they've asked me for my communications dating back to April 1st, 2020, seven months before the election even occurred, ten months before or nine months before January 6th occurred. I mean, how in heaven's name does that have any relevance to try for their doing their job of trying to find out what what caused what what you know who who led the charge on January 6th? It, it's insane. And what they're trying to do is just scour around. For every communication I've had, including communications with clients, on its face it asks for client communications, which, of course, are, are protected by the attorney-client privilege. All right, I want to get and into the that. Bar I want, hold on, I want to get into that. You're a member of the bar of what states? California. California. Also, you are practicing and in, a, in D.C. Yeah. What do those states say about the attorney-client privilege, the, 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 how, how sacrosanct that is? Well, California is, is one of the strongest in the country. It, it says a lawyer shall protect the confidences of his client at every peril to himself. And the courts have held, even if you get ordered by a court to reveal an attorney-client confidence, you are to suffer contempt of court and go to jail rather than to reveal that confidence. At every peril to himself is the language in the statute. And this committee must know it. This committee has to know it. It's We've a got setup. a line in our letter. We've got a line in our letter saying breach of an ethical duty versus, uh, you know, uh, uh, contempt of Congress is not an uh, is not a valid set of alternative options. <laughs> mm-hmm. Okay. And there was have they? When was this letter sent uh, by by you folks to this committee? The letter was sent yesterday, which was the deadline uh, for me to respond to the subpoena on the document production. And, I would uh, like you know, to know. We, we, I would like to know, John Eastman, what the reply is if they threaten to bring criminal contempt against you. You see what a normal. Well, com- yeah, go ahead. Well, I, I, I will talk about what they did last night with Jeff Clark um, because Jeff Clark. Tell everybody who Jeff Clark letter. is, please. Jeff Clark was one of the assistant attorney generals at the Department of Justice. And from what we're, we're learning in the press, he seems to be the only one over there that wanted to, to ensure that there was investigations of the, of the clear-cut illegality that was occurring in states. The, the elections division uh, refused to conduct any investigations, even though Attorney General Barr said, well, we've done investigations and we've seen nothing there. They never did any investigations because the election shop refused to do it. Um, and, and so Jeff Clark seems to have been the only one over there that was trying to get people to actually look at all of the allegations that were coming in and investigate. I want to take this one step. I want. I want to take this one step at a time. Is it inappropriate for a senior official, of the Department of Justice, to suggest that the Elections Division investigate allegations of fraud or criminality? No, no. In fact, it would be dereliction of duty not to investigate serious allegations that come your way. I know specifically, and I've said so over the radio here, of cases in Delaware County, Pennsylvania. Uh, There are a number of lawyers involved in this, including my wife, and they saw instances of fraud. There's now a civil suit that's been brought. The matter was brought to the attention of Maine Justice. Maine Justice never got back. It was brought to the attention of the U.S. Attorney in Philadelphia, who now wants to be the governor, Mick Swain. He did absolutely nothing. Was there something wrong with that evidence, that information being brought to the proper authorities, asking people to investigate that, John? No, there, there wasn't. But so how was could ordered. the Attorney General of the United States said, we've looked at everything and there's no evidence? Yeah, no, it, it, was, it was stunning. It was stunning to me. And McSwain, I think, wanted to look at this, but he was ordered not to. He was ordered to just pass it over to the, to the uh, state attorney general, who, of course, was implicated in all of the various allegations. The state secretary of state uh, actually was the one that was responsible for violating state law and getting rid of signature verification, which opens the door to massive fraud. Yes. By the way, something, something, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do something here uh, on, newsworthy. I learned recently... Uh, Mm -hmm. that the Third Circuit Court of Appeals chief judge solicited the opinions of all the judges 
about what they thought about those cases that were pending last November and December, yes. ascertained which Republican judges, appointed judges, didn't think that, that, that the, the Trump campaign had standing, and then he named those three judges to the panel. Not the random selection that the law requires. Unbelievable. This was... This is unbelievable, and I have I have had it now. I've, I've I've learned it from an insider and had it confirmed by another insider. This is extraordinary. Now, you remember the big scandal in the Sixth Circuit oh, yeah. uh, some years ago about that kind of manipulation on the appointment process. Well, this went on here, and it fed the narrative that all of the courts are rejecting re- rejecting the claims. None of the courts even looked at the evidence. No, and in, uh, in and the case, let me just shenanigans let me just, like this. Uh, let me just underscore: in the case of Pennsylvania, these were constitutional challenges. These were they legitimate were constitutional const- challenges. Hold on now. These were legitimate constitutional challenges. A couple of Supreme Court justices wanted to take them up. And these are going to continue to be legitimate challenges because the Democrats, Elias, and all, they're going to continue to do this sort of thing where they're going to go around Republican legislatures and make these changes, which is exactly what you were talking about. Now, I want to get back to attorney client privilege. So, if you, putting aside the crucially important point you've already made, that this really is an illegitimate body. This committee, which, of course, it makes sense that it's an illegitimate body because the other side has no role in it. And I don't think the House of Representatives, whether it's controlled by the Republicans or Democrats, they know it goes back and forth, would create the power for one party speaker of the House to have this kind of a, of, of a commission or committee or whatever they want to call it and completely reject the Republican leader's suggestions for the Republicans. She actually chose the Republicans who are going to be on the committee as well as the Democrats. But I want to go on with this. Attorney-client privilege. So if you were to comply with what this committee wants, you could lose your law license. I could. That's right. I could be disbarred under the ethics rules in California for, for violating an, an attorney-client uh, uh, confidence. I mean, mm-hmm. if you, you know, they're, they're putting people in impossible positions. The same thing is true with those that have claimed executive privilege. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and, and quite frankly, the couple of people that went up there that 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 you know had been directed by the president to preserve their executive privilege and testified anyway i think i think they breached their ethical obligation i agree with you now, i agree with you a subordinate to a president including a yeah. former president does not have the right to take it upon themselves to to waive a constitutional privilege and i might add john eastman and you can check me on this in terms of former presidents in a significant respect, the privilege follows that former president. The privilege follows the right of that former president. There are cases on this to, uh, to claim privilege. The fact that you have a Democrat president working with a Democrat speaker, working with a Democrat-controlled committee who refused to assert executive privilege over legitimate claims of executive privilege by the prior president is proof of nothing but the politics of this. It undermines the separation of powers, does it not? It, 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 un- it not only not only currently undermines it, but but damages the office of the presidency forevermore. If, if, can you imagine if when Trump had first come into office in January of 2017, he had directed Jeff Sessions, his attorney general, to waive executive privilege on all the Obama officials advising Obama on the Benghazi scandal, on the Fast and Furious scandal, and all these. Can you imagine the howls in the New York Times and from the Democrats in Congress that he had no constitutional authority to do that? Well, that's exactly what they have done here, and it's preposterous. The reason executive privilege exists is precisely so that the pre- president can't do the whole job of the executive branch by himself. He has to have advisors and confidence, and they have to be able to give him candid, full-throated advice so that he can make the best decisions possible. And when you say they're going to be subject to having that advice exposed for years after the fact, uh, then that, they're going to start pulling their punches on the advice. And that will undermine the power and efficacy of the presidency and hand over a significant amount of separation of powers to the legislative branch, who will now have an executive that is subservient to them. This is a very dangerous threat. And I would argue even more than that. Presidents out of power are going to be targeted over and over and over again like this is the old Soviet Union. That's what's going to happen. Well, John Eastman... Folks, you can support him and help him. He needs legal uh, assistance. He needs to pay his lawyers. He's just uh, working stiff. GiveSendGo.com. GiveSendGo.com. 
uh, go.com slash Eastman. We will post this on Parler and Getter. Give, send, go.com slash Eastman. John, uh, when appropriate, let me know how this committee responds. Typically, they leak it to the media, but uh, you'll let us know when you can. Okay, my friend? Will do. Thank you very much. All right, and, and good luck, God and God bless. You. you too. Let's help them out, folks. They need their lawyers, too. Give, send, go.com slash Eastman. This is a good man. This is a good man. They try to turn him into some kind of a evil person, a kook lawyer. There's nothing kook or evil about this man. Kook and evil is what you see in Congress. Kook and evil is what you see in the, in the pages of the New York Slimes and the Washington Compost. Their lies, their Russia collusion, their covering up of, of genocide and atrocities, NBC covering up for communist China. I'm telling you, this is a good, moral, ethical man like so many of the other people they're trying to destroy. Because Nancy Pelosi's none of that. That's right, I said it. What are you going to do? What are you going to do? Drag me in front of a grand jury, you bastards? Oh, my God. Did I say that about them, Mr. Producer? I'm sorry. Not. I shall return. Mark Lovin. Over 2,000 of you, my listeners, made the switch from overpriced wireless carriers to Pure Talk over the past few months. We want the rest of you to join us and to see what we're talking about. If you're with AT&T and Verizon or T-Mobile, your family could save over $800 a year just by switching to Pure Talk. You get great coverage, you can keep your phone and your number, and you'll save a fortune. Pure Talk is the top-rated wireless company by Consumer Affairs, with the absolute best consumer service team, based right here in America. Does that sound good? Well, it gets better. Right now, get unlimited talk, text, and 6 gigs of data, just $30 a month. And if you go over on data, they don't charge you for it. They don't care. Go to puretalkusa.com and enter promo code Levin Podcast. Again, puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin, L E V I N Podcast. And when you do, you'll save 50% off your first month. That's puretalkusa.com, promo code Levin Podcast. Pure Talk USA, simply smarter wireless. Mr. Producer, I don't have subpoena power, but I want you to invite Benny Hill, a.k.a. Benny Thomas, Thompson, rather, the chairman of this, whatever we call it, onto the program. Would you do that, sir? I want you to also invite Lynn Cheney. I want you to also finally invite Adam Schiff, all three. Any one of them are welcome to come on the program. I would like to discuss this with them. I'd like to discuss it. If I had a subpoena, I'd subpoena your asses and have you right here. But I don't have that power. I'm not a hack politician. But I'd be more than happy to discuss this with you. I know you're really tough when you go on MSNBC or one of the phony Sunday shows or a CNN or when you're leaking to the slimes and the compost and all the rest. But how about we have a real discussion with somebody who knows the Constitution and the rule of law? Let's do that. What do you say? If you need a stocking stuffer, if you need something you can actually get your hands on without the supply chain issue, you can go to Amazon.com right now, get American Marxism, hardback, the number one book of 2021, whether it's fiction or nonfiction, it's the number one book in the country for the entire year. At 50% off for the first time, it's a $28 book, it's $14 off now. If you're an Amazon Prime member, you also get a coupon for $1.25. So you can get the book for $12.75. $12.75. So I want to encourage you now. You're in the middle of Hanukkah. You've got Christmas coming up. It's the perfect gift. I know people are going to love it. If they're not familiar with it, they can learn a ton from it. That's American Marxism, America's number one book in 2021 for the holidays. It's 50% off Amazon.com. Order it, get it tomorrow, and give it to somebody who ought to read it.
Ladies and gentlemen, this final hour of the podcast is sponsored exclusively by AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we care about, faith, family, and freedom. Thank you for listening, and please support AMAC. And you can become a member at amac.us slash join. He's here. He's here. Now broadcasting from from the underground command post, deep in the bowels of a hidden bunker, somewhere under the brick and steel of a nondescript building, we've once again made contact with our leader, Mark Levin. Hello, America. Mark Levin here. Bo Snurdly, a.k.a. James Gold, will be on the program in a few minutes. Got a fantastic new book, a tribute to Rush Limbaugh, who was also a dear, dear friend and mentor to me and so many others. But James is is a great guy. I I remember going on his radio show on WABC a couple of decades ago. And he's a great radio broadcaster, by the way. He really is. But before we do that, look at this. This is from Fox Business, Jessica Chasmar. Black Lives Matter calls for a month-long boycott of white companies. What is a white company? Anybody is free to invest in a company. What is a white company? What does that mean? You see how racist Black Lives Matter is? Because it's part of the critical race theory Marxist movement. And what's all this hate against so-called white people coming out of the media? You see the hate in sports media. You see the hate on sports teams and in sports leagues. You see the hate coming out of multinational corporations that do business in communist China. What is this hate? If Comcast is going to put people on the air who hate white people... Because they're all white supremacists. And that includes non-white people who are patriotic and support the country. doesn't mean they're conservative Republican. They can still be patriotic and support the country. Then why do we support Comcast? Why do we give anything to Comcast? Why don't we tell them to go to hell? Look at Twitter. Look at the radical nut job now who runs Twitter. Who replaced the other radical nut job. Look how they target conservatives for censorship. Why are you giving business to Twitter? Let it go to hell. Let it die on the vine. Like so many of these things will. We must become activists, patriotic activists. We shouldn't spend time on sites that steal our identity, that steal information, sell it, make billions, and then trash us. The hell is that? And we shouldn't do business with corporations, corporatists, who pretend, who pretend that they're in the right, who oppose competition, who benefit not from capitalism, but from big government. Licenses, big government regulating their competition out of business. What the hell is that? Black Lives Matter movement's national arm is leading a boycott of, quote, white companies, unquote, until New Year's Day, encouraging supporters to help, quote, end white supremacist capitalism, unquote, by visiting only black-owned businesses during the holiday shopping season. Now, how many black people will be unemployed if we actually did that? Virtually all, not all, but virtually all of the major professional athletic teams are owned by white people. But when it comes to, quite frankly... When it comes to many of these sports, a majority of the employees or a majority of the athletes are black. So Black Lives Matter wants us to boycott LeBron James's team. They want us to boycott ESPN. Maybe we should. They want us to boycott MSNBC, I suppose. We're not other than the racist Joy Reid operates, Tiffany uh, Cross operates. Al Sharpton, and white racists too. If that's the game they want to play. 
It's a Marxist operation that wraps itself in race, as does the Democrat Party. Now, there's been an interesting battle between a couple of Republicans, a uh, representative by the name of Mace from South Carolina. I wasn't sure to, what to make of this representative, but I've now concluded, in my humble opinion, she's a whack job. She goes on Fox and talks the tough line about mandates. She goes on CNN and melts and melts and talks the tough line about people who aren't vaccinated and supports, in many respects, mandates. If that's not two-faced, I don't know what is, or as I put it, two-maced, if you will. She also supports the January 6th committee. Even though she knows full well it violates its rules, even though she knows full well that Nancy Pelosi appointed every single one of the members, even though she knows full well, while she's rightly visiting Taiwan to show solidarity with that country, that's right, I said country, but is undermining our own by playing a role in a real insurrection by the same Nancy Pelosi who wants to destroy our constitutional republic, that is separation of powers, who's constantly threatening the Supreme Court and the rest of the judiciary, who wants to spend us into oblivion, who wants to create more entitlements, a broader welfare state much bigger, who wants to bankrupt this country for your children and your grandchildren. That Nancy Pelosi... So Mace is just one of these Republicans. They're jello. Jello. Like the Cape May Orca. Book selling, book writing, I guess. The colossal failure that is. Chris Christie. So she's fighting with Representative Green. She's fighting with Representative Bohart. Is it Bohert or Bolert? I happen to like that lady. She's tough. What is it? Bobert. I like Bobert. Now, she said something off- offensive about Omar. Okay. Omar's very taken aback. She's, she's offended. She wants an apology. She gets a public apology, gets a personal apology. Wasn't enough. Okay. She doesn't accept the apology. What about Omar? Is she going to apologize to the millions of Jews in this country? How about the millions all over the world for her blatant, poison-dripping, cancerous anti-Semitism? Will she apologize to me? Will she apologize to righteous Americans all over this country for her hate of this country, for undermining this country, for standing with Hamas, for standing with Palestinian terrorists? Will she do that? No, she won't. She's on committees. She's on the Foreign Affairs Committee. It's like Swalwell. Swalwell. Communist China's favorite congressman. They probably have video and pictures of this guy that are as disgusting as can be. I hate to even think of it. It makes me nauseous. This guy with the uh, little dabble doom in his hair, the greasy hair, the goofball look on his face. Yes, that guy who cheated on his wife and cheated on his family. And he has the tenacity to sit on committees judging everybody else. He's a putrid punk backbencher nobody. Man ran for president of our country. I think he got three votes, not even family members, much like Kingsinger. Kingsinger hasn't made up with his family, by the way. Real head case. Nonetheless... I'm not a big fan of this Nancy Mace in South Carolina. The more I hear from her, the more I read about her. And she's very busy on Twitter at night. Oh, let me write that. Oh, this is a good one. Oh, and emojis? Nobody can out emoji me. I'm thinking, what are you, in third grade? What are you, in third grade, you nut? Apparently so. But Bobert, Bolert? What is it, Lauren Bobert? That's a citizen candidate. She runs for a congressional race. She wins. I don't know. She seems very solid to me. Oh, she's controversial. So every time you have a conservative or somebody who stands up for our principles, oh, they're controversial. 
Ooh, any nominee to the Supreme Court who's an originalist who embraces, oh, they're controversial. Oh, Mark Levin, he's controversial, right winger, controversial. Be done with these repubics who embrace this kind of attitude. Be done with the corrupt media who hates your guts and hates this country. Be done with them. Think for yourselves. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snurdly, at Rush Limbaugh's right hand throughout much of his career through his syndication. And I got to know James over the years. How are you, my friend? Mark, I am doing so well. You have the fettest freaking music. <laughs> I was just listening to some Temptations, Randy Crawford, Street Life. Oh, Mark. I love this so music. Awesome. Yeah, me too. I should be a DJ. What do you think? I think that you should be a DJ. I actually think that you and I should get together one day and just do like a two or three hour music blowout podcast. That would be cool. That would really be cool. I mean, you know, people yeah. don't expect me to like certain types of music. I love certain types of music, and I can tell you all about it. James, you were sitting by Rush's right hand all these years. You've written a fantastic book. Rush on the radio, tribute from his sidekick for 30 years. You know, I don't mean to be rude. There are people who claim to know Rush. Many of them never even met him, never even spoke to him. Uh, I'm not talking about the audience, you know, part of his family and so forth. I'm talking about people who are commenting on him. There's never yeah. been anybody like Rush. There's never going to be anybody like Rush. Explain that to everybody. Everybody kind of knows it. Yeah, well, Rush was a unique human being he had a unique set of skills that he honed better than anyone in the industry mm. and i don't mean to be offensive because we have some great people including yourself in the industry mark yeah I mean, but you're your right background. james but you're right yeah but there was nobody in this industry that could have this could make every single thing that this man wanted to talk about he could make a compelling listen. You were listening, even to things that you didn't like. If you weren't a golf fan, he could make golf interesting for you. If, no matter what it was, because he knew how to tell a story, he knew and he dug deep into whatever it was that interested him, and he brought that up. He had a very unusual self-take on politics of the day, on culture of the day. He, he was his own counsel when it came to that, he formed original thinking opinions that then became the conventional wisdom. Uh, but you knew him too, Mark. And you know, when I tell you that this man was generous oh, yeah. beyond belief, his generosity just oozed from him. And he didn't want people to know how generous he was. He often kept asking people to please not tell anybody else. Um, his audience, your audience, the talk radio audience, raised millions of dollars for things like leukemia research. Those don't have political ideologies. Leukemia hits can hit anybody at any time. Uh, um, he raised money, he and Catherine, for the families of first responders. Again, you lose a family member 
in service to the country. Those those the, those children are not thinking about politics there, and the spouses are worried about how they're going to provide a roof over their head. Well, those are the kind of things that they addressed with it. So you have this mix of a man who is deeply passionate, deeply patriotic, a deeply caring human being, a guy who was also firm in his beliefs and firm in his opinions. They were well thought out. He could back them up. And uh, on top of all of that, he was the kind of guy that for those of us who worked with him and who really knew him, you couldn't help but love him. Mm -hmm. Not like, love him. And you know, James, you talk about his compassion, which is so true. If he knew you were having a problem or so forth, he'd say, you know, what's up? What's going on? Uh, but he was a genius. He read a ton. Yep. People don't know his library was fill, were filled with books on philosophy and history. He read and he read. He never stopped prepping, but it was not even just prepping. He never stopped pursuing knowledge. Isn't that true? It is, because he had an innate curiosity about things. And once that curiosity was sparked, I don't care what it is, you know tech. He, this guy loved technology, and he had a curiosity about it. Often with Chisholm, he could have been a software developer. He could have been an aviation expert, anything. If he was interested in it, he took a deep dive and really learned and mastered the subject area. Now, your book is fascinating. Uh, the book, again, is Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years. Folks, I want to encourage you to go to Amazon.com. It's up there. It's close to the top. This book really ought to be at the top. And you're going to get uh, sort of inside views on Rush. It's not the kind of books, you know, people write where they're backstabbing, where they're disloyal. This is a book written by somebody, in the case of James Bosnerdly, who loved Rush, who, who helped Rush all through his trials and tribulations, his losing his hearing and all the rest. He relied very heavily on you, James. He relied very heavily on you because you were loyal, you were exceptionally competent and so forth and so on. What was it like during that period when he lost his hearing? It was at, it was a time of uncertainty for Rush until he had the right pieces in place. I'll never forget when I heard his about his interaction with Dawn. After Dawn, the stenographer, our stenographer came through. And after one session with Rush where she was in real time, relaying the contents of a conversation and he knew he knew he would be able to at that point continue to do radio using the skills that dawn had to uh cover for anything that he might have missed with the cochlear implant she said he got teary-eyed with her because he and he came and he thanked her because he said now i know i can do this um so he was vulnerable at that point, but he was also very determined. Look, Mark, I remember... Hold on, we got, we've got a break. I want to carry over. This is too important. Okay. I want us to take our time. The book is Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years. Folks, James Golden's more than a sidekick. He really is. He's a national gem. We'll be right back. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at AMAC.us. 
That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. You're listening to Denali, the great one. The great one. And you can call in now. 877-381-3811. It really is a pleasure to have uh, James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snurdly, on. He's got a fantastic book out, perfect for the holidays. Rush on the radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years, somebody who really knew Rush, the ins and outs of Rush. How terrific this man was, how important he was to the country, let alone this industry. And uh, you were talking about Dawn, and you said that Dawn was uh, was sort of a stenographer transcribing what was said. And and so if the cochlear implant wasn't, you know, picking up everything, she helped fill the, uh, fill the void. And he had a real tear in his eye. You know, other than friends and family in the country, radio was his big love, wasn't it? Radio was his passion and his love. I mean, Mark, six years old, he knew what he wanted to do. Amazing. He was broadcasting in his home in Cape Girardeau with one listener, his mom, over a Remco radio set that transmitted just in the house. He would already, uh, at that age, start to make up scripts of what he was doing. He was already working his skills at age six and he loved radio then he loved radio until the day that he died Mm -hmm. mark if i got a death sentence today i fell in love with radio when i was 14 years old Mm -hmm. walked into a radio station my cousin was a jock in new york i knew i wanted to be in this business but i gotta tell you mark i get the death sentence tomorrow As much as I love radio, there are some things that other things that I want to see and do before my time on Earth is through. Right. Russia's bucket list was his audience. Every single day that Rush wasn't in treatment, that Rush wasn't dealing with the after effects of treatment, he came to work. He put in the hours. When that mic opened, He sounded as robust and healthy as he ever had. His analysis was sharp. He performed great shows. Afterwards, Mark, some days he could barely get out of the seat. He was so exhausted and so spent from that performance. Rush gave it all. He didn't leave anything on the table. His bucket list was his audience. His bucket list was doing that show every day he could do it until the final show. You know, James, I'm really tearing up, and I'll tell you why. In December, before Christmas, before his last show, I didn't, you know, wasn't able to see him and so forth. I said, Rush, I want to come by and see you. And we had, I'm not going to get into all of it, but he said, Mark, I can't. Because he said, with this virus and all, He said, I'm really sick. I don't want to talk about it. I don't tell other people. I try and conceal it. I don't want people to feel sorry for me. He said, I can't. And I knew. When he said, I was just going to come in, you know, say hi, give him a hug, and and leave. But uh, it wasn't possible. And I look at the final emails I have with him, and they're all about, uh, events and things going on. <laughs> he even sent me one of his letters about somebody attacking me. He said, you know, flee, obviously, flee. Right. So he said, take a look at this one. Somebody really hates you. He said, join the camp. And um, I really miss him. I mean, I really I... miss him. Well, see, you, Mark, you were one of his dearest friends. Yeah. And it's just amazing because, you know, you and I, you're probably not surprised, but you you don't know how often he talked about you to yeah. us yeah. and what an impact you had on his life as his friend. And i got to tell you, he was very proud of your success and very happy for your success. Mm-hmm. And it was just an amazing. 
amazing thing that this man could he, – he didn't have that thing that a lot of people have, oh, now we're competitors, so I'm mm-hmm. going to take a different stance. No, 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 no. He was so secure about where he was, he never, ever – Stop wishing other people, his friends, the very best and wanting them to succeed. And your story made me tear up because, you know, for that last year, Mark, we we couldn't have contact with them. Brian, Dawn, you've been to the studio. You know our setup. Yeah. So we had to almost stay behind the glass and have very little contact with them. But I'll tell you what, mm-hmm. uh, last Christmas, right before... The, right before the, the last show he did for taking off for the Christmas holidays, he asked Brian Dawn and me to come in the studio, Mark. And he, oh. yeah. I'm sorry. It's all right, James. He, we came in, and he, he allowed us to give him a hug, and he wanted to hug us, and we wanted to hug him, and so we did. And that I was think, the first I think contact he knew. we had with him. I think yeah, at that he point he knew. Yeah, he um, knew. And you have a lot of stories in this book, just fabulous stories in this book, personal stories in this book that people don't know about, all beautiful. Uh, and again, I want to encourage people to get this book. I have it right in front of me, James. It's a fantastic book. Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years, James Golden. I want to thank you for writing this. Now, James, you have your own yes, radio Lord. show. Tell everybody. I'm doing, I'm back home at my station, my place, where I was the music director, last music director, and first talk producer, and I did a talk show with them on the weekends, WABC in New York, and I'm doing now every day, Monday through Friday in the afternoons at 4 o'clock, and Saturday mornings at 8 o'clock, so I'm back home, and I'm loving every minute of it. I remember going on your show. Who was that other guy you had on there? Joe Santista Band when it was the James and Joel show. That's it. How long ago was that? That was almost 20 years ago. But, man, we had fun and we burned it up. You did. Our ratings were great. It was on the weekends. We were always in the top three. It was a great show. Yeah, we had lots of fun. Yeah. And, you know, if... if, Go ahead. Yeah, and I'm just doing a different kind of a show right now. Yeah. A lot more political, but still, I'm having fun, and I'm playing music, and I love your music, you know? this We have to do this music show together, Mark. <laughs> I'm going to talk to our company and see what we can do here. Now, let me ask you okay. this. If people all over the country, not just in New York, want to hear your show, I guess they go to the WABC website, right? Yep, WABC, and they have an app, and you can pull down the show anytime that you want to. You can listen to it. Um, after it's streamed live, they put it up as a podcast, and uh, give it a listen. No, it's definitely worth listening to, because I remember 20 years ago, you guys would have me on. It was hilarious. It was great, great radio, and you are great at radio. I'm sure Rush saw that, too. Let me tell you, I want to thank you for writing this book. It is a very, very important book, Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years, Bo Snerdley, a.k.a. in Rio, James Golden, and God bless you, my friend, and thank you very, very much. God bless you, Mark. It is so good to be with you, Mark, and thank you for being such a dear, good, loyal friend to Rush. Thank you, Mark. It wasn't hard. Thank you, buddy. You take care of yourself. And uh, Rush loved his Bo Snerdley, adored him, and the rest of the staff, too. He adored them. I'm just thankful this book is out, and I want to encourage you to get a copy. It should be the number one book on Amazon, beyond my book, beyond everybody else's book. It's a real book written from the soul, written from the heart. If you really want to know about Rush, it's not one of these tell-all books. It's a positive, loving, supportive, spiritual book. James Golden Rush and the radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years. Go to Amazon.com, Amazon.com, and you can have it for Hanukkah, have it for Christmas, or just have it. And let me just say this. I've told you this before. Rush said to me a couple of things, but a couple I want to remind you about. When I said to him, Rush, 
You're on at 12, and Hannity's on at 3. What am I going to say at 6 p.m. Eastern time that you guys haven't already said? And he said to me, you know what, Mark? The audience hasn't heard from you yet. And you'll say, in the Mark way, what you need to say. And that was very, very kind of him. And he also said something else. You heard James Golden say it just now. Your audience is everything. Treat your audience with respect, like family members. Because that's who they are, and we are blessed. And I've never, ever forgotten that. So when James says Rush was really the best, there is no question about it. If there wasn't a Rush Limbaugh, there wouldn't have been a Sean Hannity. There wouldn't have been a Mark Levin. There wouldn't have been many of us. He was the trailblazer. And he always will be. And he's missed by you, and he's very much missed by me and James and the people who worked with him. I'll be right back. Mark Levin. AMAC, the Association of Mature American Citizens, is one of the fastest growing organizations in America. Now over 2 million conservative members strong, and I'm one of them. AMAC believes in and stands up for the values that we constitutional conservatives care about. More than talk, AMAC fights. A full-time presence in Washington, AMAC pushes back against reckless spending, disasters like Medicare for All, and the expanding reach of the federal government. And beyond advocacy, joining AMAC gives you access to a wealth of benefits and discounts, including special member-only rates on car insurance, travel discounts, cell phone plans, and a hell of a lot more. And if that's not enough, you'll get AMAC's bi-monthly magazine full of insightful articles on issues that matter to most of us, we conservatives. As I said, I'm an AMAC member, and you should be too. Join today at amac.us. That's A-M-A-C dot U-S. Stop supporting the liberal agenda that the other 50-plus organization has been pushing for. Join AMAC instead. A-M-A-C dot U-S. The book is Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years, James Golden. You're going to love this book. It's easy to read. It's embracing those of us who loved Rush and James and uh, Kathleen and Brian and the whole team. Uh, You're going to love it. And I strongly encourage you to get it. Rush on the Radio, a tribute from his sidekick for 30 years by James Golden, a.k.a. Bo Snurdly. And uh, you can get it right now on Amazon. I'll deliver it to you in the next 24 hours. And it's discounted. So that's a good thing. Perfect gift, but it's perfect for you to read about our man. He'll always be our leader, at least as far as I'm concerned. I have a sad fact to provide you with, thanks to a real reporter, Paul Bedard at the Washington Examiner. The Fraternal Order of Police has announced that most ever police shot and killed in U.S. history. This year has seen the highest number of law enforcement officers shot and killed ever. And there's still a month ago. The Fraternal Order of Police today revealed that 58 police had been gunned down 314 officers have been shot, and ambushes have jumped 126%. The grim figures come as crime is surging around the nation, but receiving little attention from Washington or the White House, as Paul Bedard points out, other than continued debates about funding or defunding police departments. Enough is enough says the National Fraternal Order of Police. More officers have been shot and killed this year than ever before. The police union and associated groups have blamed the growing lack of respect and funding of law enforcement for the spike in attacks. FOP said there's no doubt that the recent erosion of respect for law enforcement has fueled more aggression towards police officers And what has been seen in previous years is violence continues to be aimed at law enforcement 
Our officers continue to show up every day to keep the communities they serve safe. These men and women run toward danger to protect the public when everyone else is running away. God bless our police. God bless our police. We salute our armed forces, police officers, firefighters, and emergency personnel. Folks, don't forget to pick up your copy. Rush on the radio. Amazon.com. While you're there, grab your copy of American Marxism. I will see you tomorrow. God bless each and every one of you.